Welcome to the Kaizen booth here at SMT AI. I'm joined by old friend and colleague Tom Forsyth. Nice to see you, Tom. Good to see you, Trevor. So um, you've had a, quite a bit of success recently with the introduce, introduction of your analyst uh, bath monitoring system. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about it and, and where you see the future path for, the, for, for this type of technology. Sure, and, and thank you. It's great to be with you today. The, well, the analyst started as, as, as pure bath monitoring, but, but what we did was, you know, we didn't think the world needed another gauge or another horn going off. Mm -hmm. So we said, all right, monitoring is great, that's really an important function, it's necessary and appropriate. How do we, how do we activate that data? So a key part of analyst as it came into the market was this idea of remote access, remote delivery, exception reporting. If you're, in our case, bath concentration is off, you're going to get a text warning, warning you before it's off the rails, if your temperature's off, that sort of thing. Pretty basic. We then very rapidly, as soon as we saw that, we turned around back to our process control systems, the PCSs that we've been selling for 20 plus years, and said, well, gee, we only keep track of 40 or 50 variables in there, so there was a bit of code to write. Uh, <laughs> a few more lines on the list. Right. And we turned around and started porting all that to the web, which of course did another thing, right? A, the same exception alerts, you know, tracking, monitoring, evaluating, but it also became an archive. Okay, because now I've got this archive, it's a few clicks and, and now you're looking at something a few months or a few years ago sort of thing, which has great value for the, for the high rel people. How easy is it to, to you know, to, to dive back, you know. Uh, really easy, it's yeah. it's just a few clicks and you know, it's it's not, it wasn't designed actually to be an archive retrieve system, although now that we know that people really see value in that feature, that will change how we do some of the coding. Mm -hmm. But it, so it, it took, you know, 30 seconds instead of, you know, a half hour going to the attic. Right. So it was pretty, you know, wasn't quite instantaneous for that archival retrieve, but it's pretty quick. Um, and that, of course, leads you into this idea. Now that you get to see, you, you set in your process, you lock in your parameters, you're rolling, and you, of course, now you're correlating that with your your process uh, quality system, right? Mm -hmm. um, products coming off the end of the line, is it meeting the inspection standards, whatever they may be? Of course, there's been some dynamics there in the industry with yep. rows and objective evidence and whatnot. Yep. But whatever that standard is, is it meeting your standard or not? Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's not meeting your standard, then you have to ask yourself, well, gee, if it's a new process and I've qualified it and it's a month or two later, why, why am I not meeting my standard? If it's a really old process that's worked you know, very reliably for years, you have the same question, but a bit of a different hunt. You know, there you might say, all right, clearly my cleaning process has been reliable, functioning on these SKUs for years, and I've, had a, I've got a deviation I know where to look, or now I need to look somewhere away from the cleaning line because it's, wor it's worked for years and years and years, but if I've made a recent change in my cleaning line, mm. made new material, new set points, whatever it may be, now I've got to ask that question, all right, well, why did that work for several weeks or a month, but now it doesn't work today? Right. And, and that's a real focus of, of uh, a discussion we're trying to get started in the industry, this idea of, you know, our industry's built on process validation. Right, the medical side in particular, right? You do, you know, and they get out the chisels and the stone tablets and God forbid anything should change. So when you start to see some of that uh, uh, variation in, in performance within those set points, uh, we think there's some, some evolution that needs to happen in product qualification. So you're really looking for a set of um, a best practice and, and guidelines. We do, and, and, and we don't believe this is a Kaizen project, we believe this is an all of us project. Right. Uh, who knows, maybe at some point turns into a standard, who knows, it's way too early to think about that. Mm -hmm. But this idea of how do we get there, what do we worry about, how do we do that forecasting? You know, you know we've over the years developed different tech, tests and technique that's elevated uh, uh, humidity and, and uh, temperature, what is that trying to do? That's, that's life cycle acceleration. Right. That's trying to help us try to look into the future. Maybe we need to think about that for somehow on, on the cleaning material side. Not so sure. We don't we don't really know what the answer is, but we know that uh, users out in the industry are experiencing this dilemma. They put a cleaning process in, they get it rolling, everything's great. A couple of weeks later, gee, I was running 10%, now 10% is not happy anymore. Now I need 15. Well, well, what changed? Why do I need 15? Right. What's going on? Everything seems to be the same. Yeah, but doesn't the bath monitoring system that you have, the, the analyst, does it not uh, notice chemistries that are drifting out? Or well, it'll keep it. If, it'll keep it if you pick ten percent. It'll keep it at ten percent. Right. But it doesn't notice if ten percent is no longer adequate. Right. And and that's the dilemma here. We're seeing that out in the field with some technologies, mm -hmm. and we think it comes back to the qualification program. 
that how do we, and, and people are doing things mostly how we've done it for many years. Uh, it, it may just be, simply be new technology in the cleaning world is, is has a, has, this is a potential risk factor. You know, right. we're, we're you know, let's face it, the component design people are continuing to push the envelope, the soldering people are getting pushed in their envelope to, to meet those needs, and, and we're the next guy. Right. Okay, whenever you're the third guy in the match, you're in a bad spot, right? So um, that whole challenge becomes, is, is upping the game. I think it's starting to show some of the edges in the, as, as we all, we and, and the other people in the cleaning world, you know, push our technology forward these may be new edges of the envelope that we didn't know existed before. Could be. I mean, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, cleaning is really used in a lot of the high rel applications, but it's coming into the mainstream with miniaturization. More and more, and yeah. where people have less experience. Right. You know, in those high rel applications, the, the technical staffs on site have a lot of tribal knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've been dealing with this stuff for years. They know, okay, we, this happened or that happened. They can put things in context. Mm -hmm. As cleaning drifts more and more into the mainstream, those new users don't. You know, they don't have that context. So you, so that, you need the guidelines. Right, right exactly. So we, we're trying to get the discussion going. We're not sure, you know, exactly how it turns out at the end. Uh, we we got we to play through and, and sort of see how it goes. But but we think it's a, a good discussion that, uh, that we'll all be better for. Absolutely. Great. Well, we look forward to sort of uh, monitoring that and seeing how, how it progresses. Um, and uh, I hope you get it going because these things are they're not a, they're not a fast process. You know, no, making no, standards. Not these fast. are these are very methodical, and, and that's what we need. We we don't need ready you know fire aim here. Mm -hmm. uh, we need we need to get the discussion going. You know, collect some data, get people's observations and inputs, and and see you know, maybe the perceptions are wrong. Maybe the perceptions well, no, that's not really what's happening. It's people aren't monitoring and controlling enough. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps that'll be true, but right. but by getting the discussion going, we'll sort it out and we'll find a better place for the industry forward to it. Well, thank you for giving us uh, the, your insight today, Tom. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank joining you. us today. Bye.